Hello everybody, my name is Rodolfo and I'm here tonight to help you guys to succeed in getting your boiler license, okay? I have a few questions for you guys with my best answer, okay? And I really recommend you guys to find a trade school near you and take the classes, okay? So let's go for the questions with my best answer. So, first question of the night. What is a slow opening valve and what is a quick opening valve? A slow opening valve requires more than five full turns to be fully open and a quick opening valve requires less then five full turns to be fully open, okay? How do you blow down a boiler? How do you blow down a boiler? So, when you blow down a boiler, you need to find the true water level. And you need to make sure that you have half of the gauge glass or more water inside of the drum, okay? And then you open cooling water to the blow down tank. After that, you open the quick opening valve. Then you open the slow opening valve fully wide and close it. Close the quick opening valve and check column and, gla and glass and secure cooling water to the blow down. Okay, the quick opening valve and the slow opening valve is the bottom blow down valves, okay? And checking the column and glass is for you to check the gauge glass again and double check that you didn't blow too much bringing the boiler close to the low water condition okay how do you find a true water level in a boiler how do you find a true water level in a boiler you find a true water level by blowing down the water column and the gauge glass. Blow down the connections to the glass in independently to assure that there are no blockage. So, talking about a, uh, just a simple gauge glass, you're gonna have a valve in the bottom of the glass and you're gonna have a valve on top of the glass. Both valves are connected and has a drain. So close the bottom, open the top to blow down the top. Then you close the top and open the bottom to blow down the bottom. And then you open the top, leave. Then you close the top, leave both closed so you can see the water the gauge glass okay and that's the true water level now if it is full of water when you blow down you're gonna see that the level fluctuated if it fluctuates and go up it's full but if it fluctuates and goes down you don't have water inside of the drum very dangerous shut off the fire immediately how does a pressure gauge work? How does a pressure gate work? A pressure gate utilizes a bordon tube to indicate pressure. A hollow tube closed at the end is connected to a linkage and an indicator. As pressure is applied, 
to the tube straighten and indicates the condition on the calibrated face. So if you never saw a board on tube, it's like a coil. And when pressure is applied, it's try to uncoil the tube. And this motion is linked to an indicator that will read the pressure. Okay. What's the difference? between blow down tank and a flash tank what's the difference between a blow down tank and a flash tank a blow down tank tempers the blow down before discharging to sewer a flash tank recovers heat from the blow down in addition to tempering the blow down. So, a guy asked me a question about flash tank and he asked me if it is a heater exchanger. It depends. Uh, if, and it is kind of a heater exchanger, okay? But on that case, okay, uh, the hot blow down was going to uh, tubes that will have condensate, hot condensate, to flash that condensate in a low pressure steam. So, blow down tank will temper, so will cool off, okay? Adding city water, make it cool, cold, before discharging, okay? And the flash tank will recover the heat in addition to cool off that blow down water before discharging to the sewer. A pressure gauge, gauge reads 200 PSI. What's the absolute pressure? So, the atmospheric pressure is 14.7. That's why you add 14.7 to have 214.7 PSI A. Pressure per square inch absolute. Okay. Um, how often would you test the low water cutout. How often? Every shift, okay? Every shift. And if it pass, good. Keep running. And if it fail, secure the boiler. Shut off the fuel and fix it, okay? What's a open feed water heater? And what's a closed feed water heater? In an open feed water heater, the steam and water comes in direct contact, such as a DA. In closed feed water heater, the steam and water do not come in direct contact such as a shell or tube heat exchanger. So if gets con the feed water gets in contact with a steam, open feed water heater. But if the feed water goes inside of a tubing, that tube is surrounded by steam to heat it up the feed water, that's a closed feed water heater. Where in the boiler room is a check valve required? Where in the boiler room is a check valve required? The ASME code dictates that check valve will be placed on the feed water line between the feed pump and the boiler. So, requirement is to be placed between the feed water pump 
and the boiler. Uh, pretty much, guys, uh, all these questions, okay, you that's going for a lower license need to know, okay? Between slow opening valve and quick, how to blow down a boiler, that's a very common question, okay? How to find the true order level, okay? I didn't add it here because they could ask you how to blow down the gauge glass, okay? Uh, how the pressure gauge works or how does the Borden tube works, okay? Uh, between difference between blow down and flash tank. I'm not gonna say that they're gonna ask you about the flash tank for the beginner license, but definitely they they may ask you what uh, it's the blow down tank you use it for, okay? Uh, how to change PSIG to PSIA and vice versa, very common and easy one. How often low water cut out, you have to test it, very common. Open feed water heater and a closed feed water heater, and yeah, you may not for the beginner license, okay? Check valve, that's another one that you guys need to memorize, okay? So thank you very much, and I see you in the next video. Thank you.